Hi guys, this is Allison from Alley Cat Creations. How are you? Please like that thumbs up button. Please share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And if you get anything from my work, a connect the dot, a mind blow moment, a mushroom cloud moment, a new book to read, a new author to explore, please consider supporting my work. All the links will be at the bottom of this video. I wanna wish everybody who celebrates a happy Mother's Day. Both my mothers are in heaven. And there is a huge reason why I haven't been uploading videos um, in the last nine or 10 days. Um, my co-host number one, Miss Morgan Cat, was acting really odd, not herself. And I took her to the vet and she has kidney disease, which is for an 18 year old, she's on her way out. So I got special food. I get, I give her IV treatments and she gets one tomorrow. Um, sucks, but such is life. And I hope that I made, I hope she becomes human. She deserves it after this lifetime <laughs> dealing with me. Um, yeah, so it's been really difficult for me because she's been keeping me up all night. I give her a tub time. She loves now the bathroom and loving the water from the the tub. So she wakes me up at three o'clock, four o'clock, five, six, seven. She doesn't leave me alone. And she's jumping on my chest and she's snuggling her face in me and tickling me and it's a disaster. I haven't been sleeping. So my eyes aren't as efficient to read books. Fun. So here I am, Mother's Day, a little chill today. And I'm going to read The Secret Doctrine. Blavonsky, in this chapter, holy shit is good. Super, super amazing, super good. Chaos, Theos, and Cosmos. It's going to be a good one. These three are the containment of space, or as a learned Kabbalist has defined it, quote, space, the all-containing uncontained, is the primary embodiment of simply unity, boundless extension, end quote. But he asks again, boundless extension of what? And makes the correct reply, the unknown container of all, the unknown first cause. This is the most correct definition and answer, most esoteric and true from every aspect of occult teaching. Space which in their ignorance and iconoclastic tendency to destroy every philosophic idea of old, the modern wiseacres have proclaimed an abstract idea and a void is in reality the container and the body of the universe with its seven principles. It's a body of limitless extent whose principles in occult phraseology, each being its turn, a cemetery manifest in our phenomenal world, only the grossest fabric of their subdivisions. No one has ever seen the elements in their fullness, the doctrine teaches. We have to search for our wisdom in the original expressions of the primeval people and in their synonyms. Even the last of them, the Jews, show in their Kabbalistic teachings the uh, this idea. The seven-headed serpent of space called the Great Sea. In the beginning, the Elhim created the heavens and the earth, the six Sithara. They created six, and on these, all things are based. And those six depend upon the seven forms of the cranium up to dignity of all dignities. 
ancient divisions and mystic numbers. I'm going to put a pause there. So if we look at the Vedic and we look at the Norse, they also talk about the void of space and how things were formed out of nothingness and then started creation. Those two stories are very, very similar, just a little different ways of saying it, but this is onto something. Now, wind, air, and spirit have ever been synonymous with every nation. Pneumonia, pneumonia, new yuma, spirit, and amos, the wind, and the Greeks, spiritus, and ventus, with the Latins, were convertible terms, even if dissociated from the original idea of the breath of life. In the forces of science, we see, but the material effect of the spiritual effect of one of the other of the four primordial elements transmitted to us by the fourth race as we shall transmit ether or rather the gross subdivision of it in its fullness to the sixth root race. This explained in the text of this and the following book. Chaos is called senseless by the ancients because it represented and contained in itself chaos and space being synonymous, all the elements in their rudimentary, undifferentiated state. They made of ether, the fifth element, the synthesis of the other four. For the ether of the Greek philosophers is not its dregs, of which indeed they knew more than science does now, which are rightly enough supposed to act as an agent for many forces that manifest on earth, their ether was the akasha of the Hindus. The ether accepted in physics is one of its subdivisions on our plane, the astral light of the Kabbalists with all its evil as well as good effects. On account of the uh, essence of ether or unseen space being held divine as a supposed veil of deity, it was regarded as the medium between the life and the next one. The ancients consider that when the directing active intelligences, the gods retire from any portion of ether in our space, the four realms which they superintend, then that particular place was left in the possession of evil, so called by reason of the absence of good from it. It's very interesting. Quote, the existence of spirit in the common mediator the ether is denied by materialism, while theology makes of it a personal God. But the Kabbalist holds that both are wrong, saying that in ether, the elements represent but matter, the blind cosmic forces of nature, while spirit represents the intelligence which directs them. The Aryan, Hermetic, Orphic, and Pythagorean cosmological doctrines, as well as those of the Sanchionathon and Barosos are all based upon one irrefutable formula, that the ether and chaos are, in the Platonic language, mind and matter were the two primeval and eternal principles of the universe, utterly independent of anything else. The former was all, the all vivifying, Intellectual principle, the chaos, a shapeless liquid principle without form or sense from the union of which two sprang into existence. The universe or rather the universal world, the first androgynous deity, the chaotic matter becoming its body and ether its soul. According to the phraseology of the fragment of Hermit Hermas, chaos from the union with spirit obtaining sense shown with pleasure and thus was produced the protognos the firstborn light this is the universal trinity based on the metaphysical conceptions of the ancients who re who reasoning by analogy made of man who is a compound of intellect and matter the microcosm of the macrocosm or great universe Nature abhors vacuum, said the Priapetics 
who comprehended perhaps, though materialist in their way, why Democritus, with his instructor at Lippisus, taught the first principles of all things contained in the universe were atoms and a vacuum. The latter means simply latent deity or force, which before its first manifestation, when it became will, communicating the first impulse to the, those atoms, was the great nothingness, ayin sof, or nothing, was therefore to every sense a void or chaos. That chaos, however, became the soul of the world, according to Plato and the Pythagoreans. According to Hindu teaching, deity in the shape of ether, akasha, pervades all things. And it was called, therefore, by the, the urgists, the living fire, the spirit of light, and sometimes magnes. It was the highest deity itself, which, according to Plato, built the universe in the geometrical form of the dodecahedron. Do and its first begotten was born of chaos and primordial light, the central sun. The firstborn, however, was only the aggregate of the host of the builders. The first constructive forces who are called in the ancient cosmogonies, the ancients, born of the deep or the chaos, and the first point. Here is the Tetragrammaton, so-called at the head of the seven lower Sitharoth. This was the belief of the Chaldees. These Chaldeans, writes Philo, the Jew, speaking very flippantly of the first instructors of his ancestors, were of opinion that the cosmos among the things that exist is a single point, either being itself God, Theos, or that in it is God comprehending the soul of all things. Chaos, Theos, cosmos are but the three aspects of their synthesis space. One can never hope to solve the mystery of this tectris by holding to the dead letter even of the old philosophies as now extent. But even in these chaos, theos, cosmos, equal space, are identified in all eternity as the one unknown space, the last word about which will perhaps never be known before our seventh round. Nevertheless, the allegories and metaphysical symbols about the primeval and perfect cube are remarkable even in the exoteric Puranas. There are also Brahma in the Theos, evolving out of chaos, or the great deep, the waters over which spirit equals space, personified by Anya, the spirit moving over the face of the future boundless cosmos, is silently hovering in the first hour of reawakening. It is also Vishnu sleeping on Anatta Sasha, the great serpent of eternity, of which Western theology, ignorant of the Kabbalah, the only key that opens the secrets of the Bible, has made the devil. It is the first triangle or the Pythagorean triad, the god of the three aspects, before it is transformed through its perfect quadrature of the infinite circle into the four-faced Brahma. Of him who is and yet is not from the not being, eternal cause is born, being Purusha, says Manu, the legislator. In Isis Unveiled, it is said that, quote, in the Egyptian mythology, Kempf, the eternal unrevealed God is represented by the snake emblem of eternity encircling a water urn with its head hovering over the waters, which it incubates when it with its breath. In this case, the serpent is the Agatho demon, the good spirit. In the opposite aspect, it is the Kako demon, the bad one. In the Scandinavian Eddas, the honeydew, the fruit of the gods, and of the creative busy Girtusel, bees, 
Yudrasel is the is the tree. Forgive them. Bulls during the hours of night when the atmosphere is impregnated with humidity. And in the northern mythologies, as the passive principle of the creation, it typifies the creation of the universe out of water. This dew is the astral light in one of its combinations and possesses creative as well as destructive properties. In the Chaldean legend, a Baros Ones or Dagon, the manfish, instructing the people shows the infant world created out of water and all beings originated from the prima materia. Moses teaches that only earth and water can bring a living soul. And we read in the scriptures that the herbs cannot grow until the eternal cause it to reign upon earth. In the Mexican Popol Vuh, man is created out of mud or clay, terra gliss, taken from under the water. Brahma creates the great Manu or Muni, the first man seated on his lotus, only after having called into being spirits who thus enjoy over mortals a priority of existence and he creates him out of water air and earth alchemists claim that the primordial or pre-atomic earth when reduced to its first substance is in its second stage of transformation like clear water the first being the alchemist proper this primordial substance is said to contain within itself the essence of all that goes to make up man. It has not only all the elements of his physical being, but even the breath of life itself in a talent, in a latent state ready to be awakened. This, it derives from the incubation of the spirit of God upon the face of the waters, chaos. In fact, the first substance is chaos itself. From this, it was that Parsilius claimed to be able to make his home unical, and this is why Thales, the great natural philosopher, maintained the water was the principle of all things in nature. Job says in chapter 16, I want to say. That dead things are formed from under the waters and inhabitants thereof. In the original text, instead of dead things, it is written dead rifem, giants, or mighty primitive man, titans, from whom evolution may one day trace our present race. In the primordial state of the creation, says Pol Polar's mythology des indigus, the rudiment universe submerged in water, reposed in bosom of Vishnu, sprung from this chaos and darkness. Brahma, the architect of the world, poised on a lotus leaf, floated, moves upon the waters, unable to discern anything but water and darkness, perceiving such a dismal state of things, Brahma, soliloquies in consideration. Who am I? Whence came I? Then he hears a voice, direct your thoughts to Bhagavat. Brahma raising from his natatory position, seats himself upon the lotus in an attitude of contemplation and reflects upon the eternal, who pleased with the with this evidence of piety, disperses the primeval darkness and opens his understanding. After this, Brahma issues from the universal egg, infinite chaos as light, for his understanding is now opened and he sets himself to work. He moves on the eternal waters with the spirit of God within himself. And in his capacity of mover of the waters, he is Vishnu or Narayana, this is esoteric, of course, yet in its main idea as identical as possible with the Egyptian cosmogony, which shows in its opening sentence, Athtar, or Mother Night, which represents a limitable 
darkness as a primeval element which covered the infinite abyss animated by water and the universal spirit of the eternal dwelling alone in chaos. Similarly, in the Jewish scriptures, the history of the creation opens with the spirit of God and his creative emanation, another deity. The Zohar teaches that it is the primordial elements, the trinity of fire, air, and water, the four cardinal points, and all the forces of nature, which form collectively the voice of the will, Memrab, or the world, the logos of the absolute silence, silent all. The indivisible point, limitless and unknowable, spreads itself over the endless space and thus forms a veil, the Moka Prati or Para Brahman, which conceals the absolute point. In the cosmogonies of all the nations, it is the architect synthesized by Demiurgos in the Bible, the Elohim, who fashioned cosmos out of chaos. And who are the collective theos, male, female, spirit, and matter? By a series, Yom, of foundations, Hastath, the Alhim caused earth and heaven to be. In the Bible, it is first Alhim that Jahav Ahim, Finally, Jehovah, after the separation of the sexes in chapter 4 of Genesis, it is noticeable that nowhere except in the latter, the last cosmogonies of our fifth race, is the infallible and unimmutable name, the symbol of the unknown deity, which was used only in the mysteries, used in connection with the creation of the universe. It is the movers, the runners, the theai, who do the work of formation, the messengers of the man law, who have now become in Christianity the messengers, Malachim. And it seems the same in Hinduism or early Brahmanism, for it is not Brahma who creates the Rigveda, but the Purjatapa. I'm going to get that word right one day. The lords of being, who are the rishis, the word rishi, according to the professor Malhakaido Kunang, being connected with the word to move, to lead on, applied to them in their terrestrial character. When all patriarchs, they lead their hosts on the seven rivers. Moreover, the very word God in the singular, embracing all the gods, or theos, from Thei, came to the superior civilized nations from a strange source, one entirely as preeminently phallic as the sincere open-spoken Lingham of India. The attempted to derive God from the Anglo-Saxon synonym good is an abandoned idea for in no other language in all of which the term varies more or less from the Persian coda down to the Latin Deus has an instance been found of the name of God being derived from the attribute of goodness. To the Latin races, it comes from the Aryan Deus, the day, to the Slovenian from the Greek Bacchus, Bagbag, and to the Saxon races directly from the Hebrew Yodai or Yad. The letter is Yad. The letter number letter is 10, male and female, and Jad, the phallic hook, hence the Saxon God, the Germanic Goth, and the English God. This is this symbol term may be said to represent the creator of the physical humanity on the terrestrial plane, but surely it had nothing to do with the formation of creation of spirit gods or cosmos. Chaos, theos, cosmos. The triple deity is all in all. Therefore, it is said to be male and female, good and evil, positive and negative. The whole series of contrasted qualities, when latent in Paralaya, it is incognizable and becomes the unknowable deity. It can be known only in its active functions, hence a matter force and living spirit, 
the correlation and outcome or the expression on the visible plane of the ultimate and ever to be unknown unity. In its turn, this triple unit is the producer of the four primary elements, which are known in our visible terrestrial nature as the seven, as far as the five elements, each divisible into 49 or seven times seven sub elements with about 70 of which chemistry is acquainted. Every cosmological element, such as fire, air, water, earth, partaking of the qualities and defects of their primaries are in their good nature, good and evil. Force or spirit and matter, in each therefore is at one and the same time life and death, health and disease, action and reaction, the four elements. They are ever and constantly forming matter under the never ceasing impulse of the one element, the uncognizable represented in the world of phenomena by the ether or the immortal gods who give birth and life to all. In the philosophical writings of Solomon ben Yehuda, Ibn Gerbal, translated by Mr. Isaac Meyer, Kabbalah just published, it is said on the structure of the universe, our Yuda began, it is written. Elohim said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Come see at the time that the holy created the world. He created seven heavens above and seven earths below, seven seas, seven days, seven rivers, seven weeks, seven years, seven times, and 7,000 years that the world has been. The holy is the seventh of all. This besides showing a strange identity with the cosmogony of the Puranas, Vishnu Purana first book, corroborates with regard to number seven, all our teachings as briefly given in esoteric Buddhism. The Hindus have an endless series of allegories to express this idea in the primordial chaos before it became developed into the seven oceans, emblematic of the seven gunas, conditioned qualities composed of trigunas, lie latent both Amarati immortality and visha, poison, death, evil. This allegory is found in the churning of the ocean by the gods, Amrita, is beyond any guna, for it is unconditioned per se, yet when fallen into the phenomenal creation, it got mixed up with evil, chaos with latent theo in it, and became, and be, and sorry, and before cosmos was evolved, Hence, once finds Vishnu standing here to eternal law, periodically pulling forth cosmos into activity, churning out the prim primitive ocean, boundless chaos, the Amrata, Amrita of eternity reserved only for the gods and the divas. And he has to employ in the task of Nagas and the Asuras, demons in the esoteric Hinduism. Cause Nagas, reptiles, reptilians, dracos, follow that line. The whole allegory is highly philosophical, and we find it repeated in every philosophical system. Plato, having fully embraced the ideas of Pythagoras, who had brought them from India, compiled and published in a form more, intellig more intelligible, than the mysterious numerals of the Greek sage. Thus, the cosmos is the sun, with Plato having for his father and mother the divine thought and matter. The Egyptians, says Dunlap, distinguish between the older and younger Horus, the former the brother of Osiris, the latter the son of Osiris and Isis. The first is the idea of the world remaining in the demiurgic mind, born in darkness before the creation of the world. The second Horus is this idea going forth from the Logos, becoming clothed with matter and assuming an actual existence. The mundane God, eternal, boundless, young and old of winding form, 
say the Chaldean oracles, this winding form is a figure to express the vibratory motion of the astral light with which the ancient priests were perfectly well acquainted through its name was invented by the Mart Martinists. Now Cosmo, Cosmo Altri has the finger of scorn pointed at the superstitions by modern science, which ought, however, to, as advised by the French savant, before laughing at it, to remodel entirely its own system of cosmo pneumatological education. Cosmo Altri, like pantheism, may be made to yield in its ultimate expression the words applied to Vishnu. He is only the ideal cause of the potencies to be created in the work of creation, and from him proceed the potencies to be created after they have become the real cause. Save that one ideal cause, there is no other to which the world can be referred. Though, and through the potency of that cause, every created thing comes by its proper nature. That was cool. On the hidden deity, its symbols and glyphs. Get ready. The logos, our creative deity, the world, the word made flesh of every religion has to be traced to its ultimate source and essence. In India, it is a protest of 1008 divine names and aspects in each of its personal transformations from Brahma, Purusha, down through the seven divine rishis and 10 semi-divine Prajapati, also rishis, to the divine human avatars. The same puzzling problem of the one in many and the multitude in one is found in other pantheons in the Egyptians, the Greek, and the Chaldeo-Judaic, the latter having made confusion still more confused by presenting its gods as you hermits humorizations in the shapes of patriarchs. The latter are now accepted by those who reject Romulus as a myth and are represented as living historical entities. Again, guys, I'm going to butcher some words. In the Zohar, in Soph, is also the one and the infinite unity. They're onto something with that. This was known to the very first, very few learned fathers of the church who were aware that Jehovah was but a third rate potency and no highest God. But while complaining bitterly of the Gnostics and saying our heretics hold that proprietor is known but the only begotten son who is brahma among the rest that it is to the mind inaras never mentioned that the jews did the same in their real secret books valentinius the profoundest doctor of the gnosis held that there was a perfect aeon who existed before bathos or Buthon the first father of unfathomable nature, which is the second logos called proprietor. It is thus Aeon, who springs as a ray from Aeon Soph, who does not create an Aeon, who creates or through whom rather everything is created or evolves from the ba Balsanians taught. Yeah, guys, I'm butchering shit. I'm sorry. There was a supreme god, Abraxas, by whom was created mind, Mahat in Sanskrit, Nous in Greek. From mind proceeded the word logos, from the word providence, divine light rather, than from its virtue and wisdom in principalities, powers, angels. By these angels, the 365 aeons were created. 
amongst the lowest indeed, and those who made the world be set last of all the God of the Jews, whom he denies to be God, and very rightly affirming in, he is one of the angels abid. Here then, we find the same system as the Puranas, where in the incomprehensible drops of seed, which becomes a golden egg from which Brahma is produced, Brahma produces Mahat. True esoteric philosophy, however, speaks neither of the creation nor of the evolution in the sense of exoteric religions do. All these personified powers are not evolutions from one another, but so many aspects of the one and sole manifestation of the absolute all. The same system as the Gnostic prevails in the separatical aspects of A and so. Yet all these aspects are in space and time. A certain order is maintained in their successive appearances. Therefore, it becomes impossible not to take notice of the great changes that the Zohar has undergone under the handling of generations of Christian mystics. For even in the metaphysics of the Talmud, the lower face or lesser countenance, the micro prosperous, in fact, could never be placed on the plane of the same abstract ideal as the higher or greater continents, macro prosperous. The latter is in the Chaldean Kabbalah, the pure abstraction, the word logos or da bar in Hebrew, which would though it becomes in fact a plural number or words, da brahmin, which it reflects itself or falls into the aspect of a host of angels or sifra numbers, is collectively one, and on the ideal plane, a not zero, a nothing, it is without form or being, with no likeness with anything else. And even Philo calls the creator the Logos, who stands next to God, the second God, and the second God who is his highest God's wisdom. Deity is not God. It is nothing in darkness. It is nameless and therefore called Ayin So, The word Ayin meaning nothing. The highest God on manifested logos is the sun. Nor are most of the Gnostic systems which come down to us mutilated by the church fathers anything better than the distorted shells of the original speculations, nor were they open to the public or reader at any time. Had their hidden meaning or esotericism been revealed, it would have been no more an esoteric teaching, and this could never be. Alone, Marcus, chief of the Marcasians of second century, who taught that deity had to be viewed under the symbol of four syllables gave, gave out more than the esoteric truths than any other gnostic but even he was never well understood for it is only on the surface of dead letter of the of his revelation that it appears that god is a quantitary to wit the infallible the silence the father of and truth in reality is quite erroneous and divulges only one more esoteric riddle this teaching of Marcus was that of the early Kabbalists and ours, where he makes a deity the number 30 in four syllables, which translates esoterically means a triad or triangle and a quantitary or a square in all seven, which on the lower plane made the seven divine or seven secret letters of which the God name is composed. This requires demonstration in his revelation, speaking of divine mysteries expressed by means of letters and numbers, Marcus narrates how the supreme tri trad, T trad, came down unto him, unto me, him, from the region which cannot be seen nor named in a female form, because the world would have been unable to bear her appearing under a male figure and reveal to him the generation of the universe untold before to either gods or men. The first sentence already contains a double meaning. 
Why should a female figure be more easily born or listened to by the world than a male figure? On the very face of it, this appears nonsensical. Withal, it is quite simple and clear to one who is acquainted with the mystery language. Esoteric philosophy on the secret wisdom was symbolized by a female form, while a male figure stood for the unveiled mystery. Hence, the world not being ready to receive could not bear it, and the revelation of Marcus had to be given allegorically. Then he writes, quote, when first the inconceivable, the beingless, the sexless, the Kabbalistic Aeon Soph began to be in labor when the hour of manifesting itself had struck and desired that its infallible should be born the first Logos or Aeon or Ion and its invisible should be clothed with form, its mouth open and uttered the word like unto itself. This word logos manifested itself into the form of the invisible one. The uttering of the infallible name through the word came to pass in this manner. He, the supreme logos, uttered the first word of his name, which is a syllable of four letters. Then the second syllable was added also of four letters. Then the third composed of ten letters. And after this, the fourth, which contains 12 letters. The whole name consists of 30 letters and of four syllables. Each letter has its own accent and way of writing, but neither understands nor ever beholds the form of the whole name. No, not even the power of the letter that stands next to itself, to the beingness and inconceivable. All these sounds, when united, are the collective beingness, unbegotten aeon, and these are the angels that ever behold the face of the Father, the Logos, second God, who stands next to God, the inconceivable, according to Philo. This is a plain as ancient esoteric sorcery would make it. It is as Kabbalistic, but less veiled than a Zohar, in which the, myster the mystic names or attributes are also four syllables, 12, 42, and even 72 syllable words. The tetrad shows in Marcus the truth in the shape of the naked woman, the letters, every limb of the figure calling her head. Oh, it's all Greek letters, and I don't know how to read those. In the Sifra, it is easily recognized by the crown or head being number one, the brain, or chachma, two, the heart, or intelligence, three, and the other seven sephiroth representing the limbs of the body. The sephirothal tree is a universe, and the Adam Kadman represents it in the West, as Brahma represents in, it in India. Throughout, the ten Sitharoth are represented as divided into three higher or spiritual triad and lower cemetery. The true esoteric meaning of the sacred number seven is clearly and cleverly veiled in the Zohar. Yet we, yet what, sorry guys, yet was betrayed by the double way of writing in the beginning or be Sharif and B. Sharath, the letter, the higher, or the upper wisdom, as shown by Mr. McGregor Mathers in his Kabbalah, and in the Kabbalah of Mr. T. Meyer, both of these Kabbalists being supported by the best ancient authorities, these words have dual and secret meaning. Bashi, Bara Elohim, means that the six over which stands the seven Sitharoth belong to the lower material class, or the author says seven are applied to the lower creation and three to the spiritual man, the heavenly pro prototypic or first Adam. When the theosophists and the occultists say that God is no being, for it is nothing, nothing, they are more We've been troll of religiously respectful to the deity that 
than those who call God he, and thus make him a gigantic male. He who studies the Kabbalah will soon find the same idea in the ultimate thought of its authors, the earlier and great Hebrew initiates, who got the secret wisdom of Babylonia from the Chaldean Hierophants, while Moses got it got his from Egypt. The Zohar cannot well be judged by its after translations in Latin and other tongues, as all those <clears throat> Ideas were, of course, softened and made it to fit in with the views and policy of its Christian arrangers. But in truth, its ideas are identical with those of other religious systems. The various cosmogenies show that the archaic universal soul was held by every nation as the mind or of the demiurgic creator and that it was called the mother, Sophia. With the Gnostics or the female wisdom, the Sifra, with the Jews, Sarawati or Vak, with the Hindus, and the Holy Ghost being female principle. Hence, born from it, the Kuros or Logos was with the Greeks, the God mind. Now, Kuros signifies a pure and unmixed nature and in intellect, wisdom, says Plato in Pratalus. And Curios is Mercury, the divine wisdom, and Mercury is the soul, sun, from whom Thoth Hermes received the divine wisdom. While then the Logi of all countries and religions are correlative in their sexual aspects, but the female soul of the world as the, de the great deep, the deity from which these two in one have their being is ever concealed and is called the hidden one, connected only indirectly with creation, as it can act only through the dual force emanating from the eternal essence. Even Asclepius, called the savior of all, it's identical, according to the ancient classics, with Pota, the Egyptian creative intellect or divine wisdom, and with Apollo Ball, Adonis and Hercules and Fata is one of the aspects, the anima mundi, the universal soul of Plato, the divine spirit of the Egyptians, the Holy Ghost of the early Christians and Gnostics, the Akasha of the Hindus, and even in its lower aspects, the astral light. For Fata was originally the god of the dead, he whose bosom they were received, hence the limbus of the Greeks, Christians, or the astral light. It is far later that Futa was classed with the sun gods, his name sin signifying he who opens as he is shown to be the first unveiled the face of the dead mummy, to call the soul to life in his bosom. Kenef, the eternal unrevealed, is represented by the snake emblem of eternity encircling a water urn with its head hoovering over the waters, which it incubates with its breath. Another form of one and the same idea of darkness, its ray moving into the waters as Logos soul, the permutation is called Fota. As Logos creator, he becomes Ayumhutpu, his son, the god of the handsome face. In the primitive characters, these two were the first cosmic duad, Newt, sky, space, or no, the primordial waters, the androgyny, unity, above whom was a concealed breath of Kempf. And all of them had the aquatic animals and plants sacred to them, the ibis, the swan, the goose, the crocodile, and the lotus. Returning to the Kabbalistic deity, this concealed unity is the Hebrew letters I can't read. Endless, boundless, non-existent. So long as the absolute is within Olum. The boundless and termless time as such and so cannot be the creator or even the modeler of the universe, nor can be our light. Therefore, Ian Sok is also darkness. The immutability, infinite, and the absolutely boundless can neither will, think, nor act. To do this, it has to become infinite, 
and it does so by its ray permeating into the mundane egg, infinite space, and emanating from its finite God. All this is left to the ray latent in the one. When the period arrives, the absolute will expand naturally the force within. According to the law of which it is the inner <clears throat> and ultimate essence, the Hebrews did not adopt the egg as a symbol, but they substituted for it the duplex heavens. For translated correctly, the sentence, God made the heavens and the earth, would read in and out of his own essence as a womb, the moon day and egg, God created the two heavens, but the Christians have chosen as the symbol of their Holy Ghost, the dove. Whoever, whosoever acquaints himself with the Merkava and the Lagash, secret speech and incantation, will learn the secret of secrets. Lagash is nearly identical in meaning with Vach, the hidden power of the mantras. Interesting. When the active period has arrived from within the eternal essence of Ayn Sof, comes forth Sifra, the active power called the primordial point, and the crown Kether. It is only through her that the unbounded wisdom could give a concrete form the abstract thought. Two sides of the upper triangle by which the infallible essence and the universe, its manifested body, are symbolized. The right side and the base are composed of unbroken lines. The third, the left side, is dotted. It is through the latter that emerges Sifra. Spreading in every direction, she finally encompasses the whole triangle. In the emanation, the triple triad is formed from the invisible dew falling from the higher unitrad. The head, Sifra, creates primeval waters. Chaos takes shape. It is the first stage towards the solidification of spirit, which through various modifications will produce earth. It requires earth and water to make a living soul, says Moses. It requires the image of an aquatic bird to connect it with water, the female element of procreation with the egg and the bird that fundicates it. When Sephora emerges like an active power from within the latent deity, she is female. When she assumes the office of a creator, she becomes male. Hence, she is androgyny. She is the father and mother, Adati, of the Hindu cosmogony and the secret doctrine. If the oldest Hebrew scrolls have been preserved, the modern Jehovah worshiper would have found the many and uncommingly were the symbols of the creative God, the frog and the moon, typical of his generative character, was the most frequent. All the birds and animals now held unclean in the Bible had been the symbols of the deity in days of old. It was because they were too sacred that a mask of uncleanliness was placed over them in order to preserve them from destruction. The brazen serpent was not a bit more poetical than the goose or swan, if symbols are to be accepted. In the words of Zohar, the invisible point, which has no limit and cannot be comprehended because it is purity and brightness, expanded from without, forming a brightness that served the indivisible point as a veil. Yet the latter also could not be viewed in consequence of its immeasurable light. It too expanded from without, and this expansion was its garment. Thus through a constant upheaving motion, finally the world originated. The spiritual substance sent forth by the infinite light is the first sifra, or shikna, sifra, Exoterically contains all of the other nine Setharaths in her. Esoterically, she contains but two Chachma or Wisdom, a masculine active potency whose divine name is, is Fa, and Bina, a feminine passive potency intelligence represented by the divine name Jehovah which two potencies form the Sifra, the third, the Jewish Trinity, or the crown, Kether. These two Sephiroths called Father, Abba, and Mother, Amona. 
or duad or the double sexted logos from which issued other seven sitharaths. This first Jewish triad, Sithara, Shahma, and Bina, is the Hindu Trimurti. However, veiled even in the Zohar and more still in the exoteric pantheon of India, ever, every particular connection with one produced in the other. The pra, Prajaprati are the Sitharats, 10 with Brahma, the dwindle to 7 with the Turmurati, and the Kabbalistic triad are separate from the rest. The seven builders' creators became the seven Prati, or seven Rishis, in the same order as the Sitharats became the creators. Then the patriarchs. In both secret systems, the one universal essence is incomprehensible and inactive in its absoluteness and can be connected with the building of the universe only in an indirect way. In both the primeval male-female androgynous principle and their 10 and 7 emanations, Brahma, Viraji, and Adhati, Vrak, on one part of the Elohim, Jehovah, or Adam, Admi, Adam, Kadmon, and Sifra, Eve, on the other. With their Parat, Jab Prajapati and Sitharops represent their totality, first of all, the archetypical men and the protologos, and only in their secondary aspect do they become cosmic powers in astronomical or sidereal bodies. If Adati is the mother of the gods, Diva Matri, Eve is the mother of all living. They are the Sak Saktri, or a generative power in their female aspects of the heavenly man, and they are all compound creators, says Gurupta Vidya Sutra. In the beginning, a ray issuing from Paramarathic Ikka, the one and only true as existence, it becomes manifested in not even going to attempt that conventional existence, which was used as Bahan to descend into the universal mother and to cause her to expand, swell, bari. In the Zohar, it is stated the infinite unity formless and without similitude after the form of the heavenly man was created, used it, the unknown light, darkness, used, a bunch of Hebrew here, heavenly form as a chariot, more Hebrew, through which to descend and wish to be called from the form, which it is the sacred name Jehovah. As the Zohar says, in the beginnings was the will of the king prior to any existence. It, the will, sketched the forms of all things that had been concealed but now came into view. And there it went forth as sealed secret from the head of Ayn Sof, a nebulous spark of matter without shape or form. Life is drawn from below and from above. The source renews itself. The sea is always full and spreads its waters everywhere. Thus the deity is compared to a shore, shoreless sea to water, which is the foundation of life. The seven palace, the fountain of life, is the first in the order from above. Hence the Kabbalistic tenant on the lips of the very build her house. It hath hewn out its seven pillars. Whence then all the identity of ideas, if there was no primeval universal revelation? The few points show are like a few straws in a hayrick in comparison to that which will be shown as the work proceeds. If we turn to the most hazy of all cosmogenies, the Chinese, even there the same idea was found. Tisi Tasi, a self-existent, is the unknown darkness, the root of the Wuling Shu, boundless age. Emetabi, or Atin, heaven, came later on. The great extreme of Confucius gives the same idea, his straws notwithstanding. The latter are a source of great amusement to the missionaries. The, these laugh at every heathen religion despise and hate that of their brother Christians of other denominations, 
and yet one and all accept a la lettre, their own Genesis. If we turn to the Chaldea, we find it in Anu, the concealed deity, the one whose name moreover shows it to be of the Sanskrit origin. Anu, which means in Sanskrit, Adam, I cannot pronounce that, smallest of the small, is a name of Parabrahman in the, Ven the Vedic philosophy. Parabrahman being described as a smaller than the smallest atom and greater than the greatest sphere of universe. Okay, there's words I can't pronounce here. This is what George Smith gives as the first verses of the Akkadian Genesis as found as a cuneiform text of the Lateris Coattails there also we find Anu, the passive deity, or Ian Sof, Bel, the creator, the spirit of God, Sifra, moving on the face of the waters, hence water itself in Hia, the universal soul or wisdom of the three combined. The first eight verses reads thus, when above we are not raised the heavens, and below on earth a plant had not grown up, the abyss had not broken its boundaries, the chaos or water tiamat the sea was the producing mother of the whole of them this is the cosmical adati in sephra those waters at the beginning were or ordained but a tree had not grown a flower had not unfolded when the gods had not sprung up any one of them a plant had not grown and order did not exist this was the chaotic or anti genetic period the double swan and the dark swan which becomes white when light is created the symbol chosen for the majestic ideal of the universal principle will seem little calculated to answer its sacred character a goose or even a swan may appear unfit no doubt to represent the grandeur of the spirit nevertheless it must had some deep occult meaning, since its figures not only in every cosmogony and world religion, but even was chosen by the medieval Christians and crusaders as a vehicle of the Holy Ghost, supposed to lead the army to the Palestine, to wrench the tomb of the Savior for the hands of the Saprian, Sex Saracen. If we are not, if we are to credit Professor Dra Draper's statement in his intellectual development of Europe, the Crusaders, led by Peter and her and the Peter the Hermit, too fast, were preceded at the head of the army by the Holy Ghost under the shape of the white grandeur in company of a goat. The Egyptian god of time, Seb, carries a goose on his head. Jupiter assumes the form of a swan and Brahma also, because the root of all this is the mystery of mysteries, the Mandun egg. Sorry, guys. My brain is like, don't know why. One has to learn the reason of a symbol before one depreciates it. The dual element of air and water is that of the ibis, swan, goose, and pelican of crocodiles and frogs, lotus flowers, and water lilies. And the result is the choice of the most unseemingly symbols among the modern as much as the ancient mystics. Pan, the great god of nature, was generally figured in connection with aquatic birds, geese especially, and so were other gods. If later on, with the gradual degeneration of religion, the gods to whom these geese were sacred became parapic deities, it does not stand to reason that the waterfowls were made sacred to Pan and other phallic deities, as some scoffers even of antiquity would have it. But that the most abstract and divine power of procreative nature had become grossly anthropomorphized. Nor does the swan of Leda show parapic doings and her enjoyment thereof, as Mr. Hargrave, Hargrave Jennings chastely expresses it, for the myth is but another version of the same philosophical idea of cosmogony. Swan are frequently found associated with Apollo as they are the emblems of water and fire, sun, 
light also before the separation of the elements. Our modern symbologists might profit from some remarks made by a well-known writer, Miss Lydia Maria Child. From time immemorial, an emblem has been worshiped in Hindustan as a type of creation or the or origin of life. Siva or the Mahadiva being not only the reproducer of human forms, but also fructifying principle, the, gener the generative power that pervades the universe. The material, the maternal emblem is likewise a religious type. This reverence for the production of life introduced into worship of Osiris, the sexual emblems. It is strange that they regarded with reverence the great mystery of human birth, where they impure thus to regard it, or are we impure that do not so regard it? But no clean and thoughtful mind could so regard them. We have traveled far and unclean have been the paths since those old anchorites first spoke of God and the soul in the solemn depths of their first sanctuaries. Let us not smile at their mode of trancing the infinite and the incomprehensible cause throughout all the mysteries of nature, lest by doing so we cast a shadow of our own grossness on their patriarchal simplicity. And that will end today's reading. The next time we will go into the Mundun egg. I hope you guys enjoyed it because I sure did. And I'm happy I'm semi back. Um, we'll see how my co-host Morgan Cat does. I'm trying to just keep her comfy cozy, but it's really taking a big chunk out of my day because I'm exhausted all the time. And I still have to do the house. Still haven't built the shed because I need help. Don't have anybody to help me. So we'll see how that goes when I get the urge to do it. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Um, hoping that Miss Morgan Cat stabilizes a bit and that I can get some sleep and not be so out of it to do more. I am still researching the time crystals, the quantum, the AI, all of that fun stuff. I'm trying to get all the articles together and do a presentation on all of it with my viewpoints. Um, that's going to be really fun. So I'm still working on that. So I hope everybody enjoyed sending my love light shield and protection to all of you. I hope all of you had an incredible Mother's Day if you celebrate for mommies, step mommies, all kinds of mommies. I hope you had a good one. And until the next one, guys.